I'm Mike Bradner, and this is Capital Views, and we're with Curtis Thayer, who's the new Commissioner of Commerce, but you're hardly a new kid on the block. You've uh, been around in state government a while, and before that in the utility business. So, Curtis, tell us a little about yourself. Um, born and raised here in Alaska, graduate of the University of Alaska Fairbanks. Uh, Anchorage is still my home. I have a, a wife and son up there. And uh, I, uh, Governor Parnell asked me to join his administration as the Deputy Commissioner of Commerce, and I did. And then about 18 months ago, moved over to the Department of Administration, and then was just recently named uh, Commissioner of Administration with uh, the departure of Becky Holberg. But before that, you were in the utility business? Uh, correct. Uh, I came from the, the private sector I had come from. I had a background uh, working for Instar Natural Gas, uh, doing government affairs, customer service, uh, public relations, customer uh, credit and marketing for the company. I was there about five years. Uh, prior to that, I had worked for uh, Conoco and Philips and BP. The last time we were going to build a, last, uh, a large diameter gas pipeline off the North Slope, uh, that was actually during the era of uh, my way or the highway. Uh, so I have a background in oil and gas and, and energy and, and then came into uh, uh, the uh, Department of, of Commerce, which was fun and kind of helped continue that on and ended up uh, in administration. People don't remember that far, long ago pipeline. That no, no, they, 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 the they don't. Uh, that, that actually was the, pro, that was the pipeline where they were going to go over the top of Alaska and into the McKenzie Delta or take it down the uh, highway through Canada. Uh, LNG wasn't really on the, top, on the uh, discussion uh, back then. And ironically, you know, now 12 years later, I can time it around my son's uh, birth because he was born in that time period. And, uh, and uh, now it's a different direction, same company. So I, I, I wish them some great success in, in the doing over that. The over the top rings a bell because, as I remember, the Alaska legislature passed a resolution proclaiming the sanctity of ANWR uh, in order to force it to the south. Uh, that's exactly right. Um, you know, back then, if you run the numbers, it made sense to go over the top. That was the preferred route, I believe, at that time. And uh, not only did the state legislature do it, but Congress did, um, saying, you know, it's, it's the highway. Um, and so uh, those were interesting times back there. The, the interesting thing back then was is we had done, or the group had done, uh, the working group had done a study of the seabed floor on the Alaska side. And they were just preparing to do it on the Canadian side when 9-11 happened. And that, of course, ceased everything. Company, uh, the country's attention turned elsewhere. Our relationship with Canada was changed in relationship with our, our, our aircraft was landing in their country because they couldn't fly and everything. So needless to say, the ice came in by things got uh, straightened out by late, uh, late uh, September, and they couldn't complete the survey on the Canadian side. So really, we'll never know if it actually worked because the survey was never finished. Now, you have the tough job of uh, personnel of negotiating contracts, and uh, you have some that were completed previously, um, and you have a, a bunch on the table that you have to try to complete before the end of the legislature. Uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting with the state because we are always negotiating contracts. Uh, contracts are, three, are every three years, and so last year we negotiated with our confidential employees, our supervisors, and what we call GGE, our general government employees. Combined, that was about 12,000 12, employees we negotiated with. Uh, this year, we're doing public safety. Uh, we have AvTech with the vocational school in Seward, but more importantly, the three maritime contracts. We have master mates and pilots, the marine engineers, also known as MEBA, and then the Inman Boatman's Union, uh, IBU. Um, and then uh, we have a whole new set with correctional officers next year. So we're constantly in this, in this vortex of negotiating contracts. And the goal is to have them complete so they can be included in uh, the budget. But you wouldn't include them in the budget up front because that has a reflection on negotiation. Oh, precisely. It's an, it's an un, you know, what we actually end up at the bargaining table is maybe not what we had planned at the beginning. And, and last year was a good, a good point in that. We went in with a, with a strategy of where we wanted to kind of end up, uh, operationally some of the challenges that we were having. Um, and then what ended, up, what ended up out of that is through the bargaining table, we looked at leave. 
And we realized that we as a state had $169 million liability in the way that we had leave because our employees could earn leave, but we had no cap on what the top earning of that leave was. Plus, when an employee went to leave state service, they could cash that out. And we had 10 employees with almost $2 million worth of leave on the books, and we have 16,000 employees. Um, so our bargaining position changed um, uh, a little bit. Um, obviously, we had a different focus, but we actually work with the unions on it. Um, and uh, we capped leave. We reduced the amount of leave new employees can earn. We capped at 1,000 hours. We grandfathered the employees that had over 1,000, but we capped them, and we increased the mandatory usage. Uh, a seasoned state employee can earn up to six weeks of leave, yet we're only requiring them to take one week of leave. So now we increase that to two, and then if, depending on where they are for hours, it was three weeks. Uh, but that to me, and, and, and I, we work closely with the unions on that, but it wasn't a difficult sell because we realized the problem, the legislature realized the problem, we set it out at the table, and we worked it out together. There was no, um, uh, what could have been very contentious, uh, we worked out, and um, uh, I, I give my hats off to uh, all three of the unions last year on that particular issue because it was the 800 pound gorilla that we didn't realize was there until we got into negotiations. And it was a future cost, it wasn't. Yeah, it was, it was a future cost that, that we saw coming, and, um, uh, and, and we still did negotiate leave, uh, not leave, but a monetary terms of uh, 1%, 1%, 2.5%. Uh, we have pay increments, uh, which are on the back half, which are built into employee people's salary. We were able to reduce those future costs. So overall, the, the, I think the unions came across very, very well. We, the state came out very well, and we had them done on time, and the legislature approved them. Curtis, we're out of time. Uh, I'm Mike Bradner, and this is Capital Views, and we've been talking to Curtis Thayer, our new Commissioner of Commerce. Thank you, Curtis. Thank you. Well, that was perfect.